All right, so here's the deal. It's 7.52, 7.53. Osaka Castle opens at nine. I want to go upstairs to the top floor to have breakfast. To have breakfast before I go, because I'm hungry. And I don't feel like going hungry all day. First of all, my skin feels so great. I just feel like wearing makeup, so I'm going to. If I didn't feel like it, I wouldn't have to, but yeah, I just feel like doing it. So I'm gonna try and do it in 30 minutes. Let's see if I can actually do that. Um, so after I go to Osaka Castle to go in and tour the inside of it, I'm going to walk to the train station so I can go to Nara, Nara Park, so I can play with the deer. It's a 40 minute, a 48 minute train ride actually. I think I can do it. I keep thinking about like when I get back home, I'm gonna have to start packing and preparing for my new apartment. Oh my God, I gotta buy a new couch because I hate my couch so much. Everyone who knows me in real life knows how much I fucking hate my goddamn couch and I want it out of my house so badly, but I've been so like unmotivated to buy new furniture at my apartment that, I, that I'm in right now because I don't fucking like it. So I just don't care to invest in it, to pour into it. And so to finally be rid of it and going into a place that like I actually love. Oh yeah, I was walking around in the fucking heat all goddamn day, sweating all day long. Like I was laying fucking brick, like a fucking construction worker. I was so tired you guys when I got home or when I got back to the hotel I was like gonna take a bath like a long hot bath and drink wine I was in the tub this was the first time I ever sat in the tub and was like I would really rather just be in the bed right now you know, I washed up got out then I was like you know I can just lay in bed and drink my sake and watch Naja and Daniel nope not even that because I Started drinking the sake and I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go to bed. But yeah, let me finish my makeup and then I'll come back to y'all when my makeup is finished and when I'm dressed because I gotta hurry up. Okay, so I don't have time. I'm literally running so late. It's already 9.20, almost 9.30, but this is the fit. Let me turn y'all around so y'all can see. So don't have my tripod. It's in my purse. I don't really get it out. So this is the fit. I'm gonna wear it with my Reeboks. Um, I guess I should put them on. Button up is from Express. This sweater is Hugo. Um, I got this from my ex. He just left it at my house one day after we broke up, so I kept it. Um, rings, cute things are coming. Bracelets, I got them from Micah's. This ring, gift. And then the necklace is Kate Spade. Hope you can see it, yeah. This necklace is Kate Spade. It just it's an it's an initial necklace and yeah, earrings also micas and then cute things are coming. But yeah, and then glasses prescribed. So, <laughs> but yeah, so that's my thing. And then if you're wondering, my shoulder bag is from Carhartt. My man got it for me. And cargos, Target, shoes, Reeboks. But yeah. Say me, listen me, love me. It's hard to say on me. And I know y'all gonna be like, you gonna see the shirt, of course you gonna be. Shut the fuck up. Don't care. Don't care what you gotta say. Um, it is 2.20. I just got back to the hotel room. I have to charge my phone as usual, you know, midday phone charge. And my crooked. Let's see. Let's play this little bit. Anyway, I'm about to charge my phone. So tomorrow is my last day here in Osaka. Then I have, I'm going to be riding the train to Kyoto. I might ask the people downstairs to deliver my luggage to my hotel in Kyoto because I don't want to carry my luggage around anymore. I'm tired of it. At least my big one, you know. And I can fit whatever clothes I need to fit in my small one and then wear that for my first day of Kyoto. I guess today what I'll do is I'll go to the 
Umeda Sky Building and I'll see like what that's all about. I had sukum in today, didn't like it. It's like a like a dipping noodle but for but like ramen style dipping noodle. And my issue with it is that like unlike cold soba, cold soba, the broth is really really light. Like imagine the consistency being like watered down soy sauce but with no salt. And then you just mix wasabi in it and you dip the noodles and you have your like fried vegetables, your tempura vegetables next to you. Sometimes tempura shrimp as well if that if it comes with that and you chow down. Whereas and it's very light, you know, you eat it, you it's it's very refreshing and you don't feel weighed down after you eat it. Whereas with sukumen because it's supposed to be ramen, dipping ramen, the broth is almost as if you you were to go to a ramen restaurant and all of the water was evaporated from it and all that was left was like the roux. So it's basically imagine like a curry consistency and you're dipping your noodles in that but the curry is lukewarm and the noodles are cold and the, all the other ingredients are cold. So when you dip it in there and you eat it, it's basically cold, cold curry with noodles wasn't a fan was not a fan went back to the osaka castle to see the inside of it it was nice it was one big ass history lesson about osaka and like the unification of japan but very interesting very beautiful like i said i went and got sukumen and so <clears throat> after that went across the street to a 7-eleven got some things let me show y'all i don't have everything i also got so i got this matcha latte Cool. I'm gonna drink it today right now actually um, I got this chiffon cake and whipped cream um, mandarin oranges love these and then I also got some some pancakes with maple syrup in them and, and bar butter or whatever it's in the bag I'm gonna be eating that tomorrow when I wake up before because I plan to wake up and immediately hop on the train to go to Nara and see what they have in Nara I'm not gonna leave without going to Nara Park so that's the plan for tomorrow. I've got some food that I can eat while I'm on the train or like while I'm, you know, uh, doing my makeup or whatever the fuck if I decide to do makeup tomorrow. This is so good. I love matcha. When people tell you it tastes like dirty water, it doesn't. The only reason they think that is because they're getting it unsweetened. And that's basically self-sabotage. You're just getting unsweetened to sound pretentious and then you don't like it and then now you want to sound even more pretentious by being like actually matcha isn't even all that good matcha is delicious you bitch you're just not having it right let me charge my phone i'll talk to y'all later peace I just got back from the Sky building here at Umeda and it was gorgeous just as I expected it to be and it really just made me even more appreciate the fact that I stuck to my guns and decided to come despite like everyone that was telling me that I shouldn't come, i.e. my family, you know, just worried about me or whatever, so telling me not to go because they couldn't get over their fears, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm happy that I stuck to my guns and came regardless of like my family trying to talk me out of coming or trying to talk me out of staying here for so long. Um, my mom was like, you know, maybe you should like wait and then like, you know, 
you can maybe you should like cut it down to 10 days instead of 14 and I was like no I want to do 14 days so I'm gonna do 14 fucking days and she was like well you'll save money the money's already paid for I'm not worried about the money money like money is already out of my bank account I'm not worried about getting it back I've already like kissed the death of goodbye so like to that money so I really don't give a fuck about getting my money back that has nothing like that ain't got nothing to do with me at this point like I'm not worried about the money I'm just worried about finally living my life for me and not living my life for anybody else but especially like growing up as the oldest as the oldest especially as the oldest daughter your parents approval and your family's approval mean the absolute world to you and it takes years of undoing that before you can finally be at peace with doing something whether you have their um their green light and their approval and their go ahead and their pride or not i think the main thing is having to choose whether you want your family's approval or whether you want your family's respect because at a certain point in your adulthood you're not going to get both i don't know being able to stick to my guns and tell my mom like no this is what i want to do this is what i'm going to do and you're just going to have to be happy with it i feel like that made her respect me a lot more as an adult and then just her seeing me do all of this like of course she's scared and everything because i'm her baby or whatever but at the same time she is now starting to understand like okay she's grown she can take care of herself she did all of this by herself she planned all of this by herself she paid for all of it herself she didn't ask me for a dime she didn't she didn't let me talk her out of anything and i think that's like the main reason why i finally had to be like bro fuck it because if i didn't i was just gonna forever have to live the way she wanted me to live and just forever be her doll and her puppet instead of be my own person and i wish this for everybody especially every oldest daughter i wish for you to finally start living the life you want to live but yeah i'm about to go because people are around I'll talk to y'all later bye Hello, you guys. I just got back to my hotel. Um, let me bring this down a little bit so you can see what the hell I'm doing. Bought some Soshu from a, a family mart and one of the train stations is in the same train station that Uniqlo was in. Strawberry Soshu. They actually sell this in America. My man buys this for us whenever we go to Chinatown. So let me finish what I was talking about um, before I cut the camera off. But basically what I was saying was like, you know, I don't fault my mom for wanting me to like basically live the way she wants me to live like that's i feel like that's an uh, inescapable fate for every parent to kind of fall victim to is wanting their children to live the life that they always expected them to live or that they had always dreamed for them to live i'm pretty sure even though i understand the harm that it can do on your child i'm pretty sure i'm gonna fall victim to it and i'm gonna have to learn how to 
remove that part of myself so that I can just be there for my child and be happy for my child. And so I like I know it's easy to just be like, I don't want to live the life that you want me to live, mom. No, no, no. Like I, I completely get that, you guys. But at the same time, it's like it's not their fault, especially if you've always wanted kids when you do have them. You've always had a life that you just imagine that they'll live, that they'll go on to live, the person that they'll go on to be. And it's hard for you to separate the child that you always imagine them to be and the child that they actually are. At some point, every parent has to come to that realization. If they don't, they usually are cut off by the child because it's always going to be a very pushy parent versus a child just trying to live their life usually an adult child at that point just trying to live their life and just trying to be who they want to be the good parents are the ones that learn how to grow out of it and so it's not necessary necessarily are you a good parent because you don't have that mindset at all it's more so you're a good parent because you learned how to be a loving and supportive parent in spite of the dreams that you had for your child in spite of what they do versus what you wanted them to do that's just like my little two cents and i feel like after this trip i feel like after this trip my mom is gonna be like a lot more inviting trips like this for me and just more understanding that i can handle myself i know how to navigate the world as a black woman as a woman but especially as a black woman, you know, and I know how to keep my head on a swivel. I know how to pay attention to my surroundings. I know when I'm like by myself at night walking to not have my headphones in and to be alert at all times and to always make sure that I'll check behind me every once in a while. Like I, I know all of these things because there, there are times where I'm out by myself at night in my hometown in Houston. I'm happy that I was able to do this for me and I'm happy that I was able to do this for my family in terms of them finally being able to see me as a full adult. It's there are there are certain milestones when your family finally start to realize like, oh wow, this person is this person is an actual adult. It's not when you get your first apartment. It's not. It's not when you get your first car on your own. It's not. It's not when you graduate from college. It's not when you graduate from high school. It's not when you get your first serious significant other. It's none of those. It's when you start hearing the very loud suggestions they give you when it comes to how they want you to live and you telling them to their face, I understand, I hear you, but I'm still going to do what, what I wanna do. And then you go on and do it and it works out just fine just like you knew it would that is when they finally start seeing you as an adult and that's when they finally start respecting you as your own person and as an adult i feel like this was like my first step into like my whole family starting to see me as during in the adults <laughs> so i almost flooded the bathroom <laughs> i was like no being an adult i almost flooded the bathroom i'm very proud of myself i'm very proud of myself for coming on this trip the time that I'm having here, it's so fun and it's so unmatched to anything that I've experienced before. I am so proud of myself for saying that I'm going to do it and actually doing it. Like I said, there were so many times where I was like just ready to back out and ready to be like, no, <laughs> oh, I'm about to cry. <laughs> there were so many times where I just wanted to back out because I was just, I was putting too much weight on my family's opinions of they felt like I should do or too much weight on their fears because they don't know. I'm so sorry, I'm not trying to cry. There were so many times where I was like, I can just cancel my trip right now. I can just cancel the flight right now. I haven't paid for any of the hotels. I can just renege. And I kept telling myself what, what kept stopping me from backing out was me telling myself you're not gonna be happy. I'm sorry if I look a mess, but I just kept telling myself, you're not gonna be happy with that decision. You're going to look up on your 26th birthday at some random new restaurant that you've never tried before in fucking Houston. And you're gonna be so angry with yourself if you don't follow through. And sure, your family will be happy, but at what cost? When you turned 25, when I turned 25, I told myself, that this was going to be the year of me. That everything I did was going to be aligned with my own interests and my own happiness because 
for far too long, I've been putting everybody else's concerns and everybody else's interests above my own. I was never happy. When I got out of that relationship last year, I had given so much of myself to that person and it was like, I gave all of this and he's still gone. Now what? When you should have been putting yourself first, when you should have been number one, you were making yourself number two for him. And now what? He's still gone. Like, <laughs> how do you feel? Are you, are you proud of yourself? Are you happy with yourself? And the answer was no, obviously. I don't care about anybody else's opinions. I don't care about anybody else's wishes, anybody else's concerns, anybody else's interests. This is about me this year because I was never going to be able to fully love anybody else until I loved myself. If I didn't love myself and I was constantly putting the people I love at number one while I put myself at number two, the love was always going to be disingenuous because it was always going to be with an underlying effect of resentment. As much as I love my family, I could have put them number one and put their concerns number one and canceled the trip. They would have been happy. They would have been fine. They would have been, you know, literally would have just said something like, you know, maybe like next year or something we can go with you. Like maybe next year I'll be willing to go to Japan. I just, I, I've never really thought about going to Japan. I just don't, I've never wanted to go and da da da. But maybe next year, maybe. I would have had to take that with a grain of salt and I wouldn't have been able to truly love them the way that they deserve to be loved because I would just forever be resentful. I, I canceled something that was so important to me because you were scared. I said I was gonna do it and I fucking did it. And nobody can take that away from me. I need to take a little swig. Let me show y'all what I got from Uniqlo. Cause I got a few more things than what I told y'all I was gonna get. So. I also got this white top, which is literally the same as the, it's cold in here. This is a white top. It's satin and it's literally the same top that I showed y'all that was in brown. I also got this cute um, like forest green sweater. Just really cute, really basic. It can go with those white pants that I was showing y'all that I had to get in a medium. I could wear them with this and then like wear my um, Reeboks or something like that. So these are the tan slacks that I was showing y'all. So yeah, I got this one. Like I said, this is the same as the white top that I just showed y'all. Got the olive green slacks. So cute, also great quality. And then the last thing I got, some leggings. I'm about to get in the tub. See y'all in the morning. I gotta wash my ass, wash my face, brush my teeth, the whole shebang. I recorded a video. I don't know what I'm gonna edit it. I'd be tired, y'all. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.